up, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you're having a great start to your week. If you're not, though, I truly believe this podcast is going to bring you joy because... Not because of anything that I'm going to do or say, but because of... Because we have a special guest on this podcast. We actually have two special guests on this podcast. So, you know, May is a big month in our house because... Both of our girls' birthday is in May, so we are approaching birthday month. Honey is going to be three on May 11th. Haven's going to be one on May 22nd. And we just thought it would be really fun to have them on the podcast, really just so we can have it for our memories. And we just think, Honey, the things she's saying right now are so funny and so good that we were like, we have got to get her on the podcast, mainly because Honey actually started her own podcast, which of course she would not do whenever we interviewed her. Of course not. She was like so nervous and being, she was just being funny and shy. But when we are at home and the only camera is my phone, she puts it on. She loves to record her podcast. She calls it the What's Up Everybody podcast. I'm just going to have to insert a little clip here because y'all have to hear it. It's actually really good. What's up, everybody? I said, What's up, everybody? Uh, and I said, What's up, everybody? And I still would. She always goes, what's up, everybody? I just want to love on you and I'm just going to record it. And like she just goes into this whole thing and then she's like, okay, today I'm going to be Isla. And then she'll act like she's the mermaid Isla or she'll do whatever today's thing is. She'll try on outfits. She's just like naturally. She's a lot like you. She's a lot like me. She's a lot like me. And she loves to preach. Like I actually caught her preaching to Cabo the other night and she said, Cabo, you are a beautiful dog and you have a beautiful God. (laughs) I was like, that's true. So she's just a lot like me. um, And she's like me too. And the fact that she gets really nervous for things and gets shy, even though at home she's not shy at all. But Mm -hmm. that's how I was whenever I was little. So anyways, we are going to bring Honey on the podcast. And again, she is almost three years old and working with a three-year-old, you never know what you're going to get. Um, and so we're just going to have a conversation so we can remember this sweet season of our life. Princess Fiona and, and Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. So, and Princess Fiona. And Princess Fiona. Well, I don't know specifically Princess Fiona, but you are having a Princess and Paw Patrol party, right? Yeah. And... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to surprise everybody with Mayor Humdinger being at the party. Look. (laughs) Put on daddy. Oh. It's Mayor Humdinger from the Paw Patrol. (laughs) Do you think he's good at it? No. No. Wait, can you do it? You do it. No, not me, but you tell on. I'm Mayor Humdinger from the Paw Patrol. You do it. Who gets the part, me or Daddy? You and Daddy. Oh, perfect. I I don't want to be Mayor Humdinger. I want to be a princess at the party, though. What princess should I be? You should be on the with me. Oh, we're going to match nails and match princesses? That would be pretty cool. All right, are you ready to start the podcast? Let's start it. I think we did start it, but that was but now we can really start it. Tell us about your cats, Mayor Humdinger. Well, I have cats because the Paw Patrol has all the dogs. Wait, are you gonna get sparkles on your nails or just pink? Oh wait, I have to say that me and you should both get pink sparkles nails. That's a me good, and you should do that's a really Can I get can idea. I get pink sparkle nails too? Yeah. I can? Yeah, we should always do sparkle nails. Yes. I think everyone in the whole world should have pink sparkle nails. Yeah. Would that make the world a better place? Yeah. That's Wait, hey, good. are you gonna do pink toenails and fingernails or just fingernails? Um I think I'm going to do both. You can okay. do both of them? What about, what if you also had pink sparkle lipstick on? <gasps> With a pink sparkle cookie? Would that be the best day ever? No, we can't do all of them. We can't do all of oh, them. Wait. Is that too much? Oh, wait. I have a good idea. Yeah. Oh, wait. I have a good idea. What if you do pink fingernails and pink sparkle lipstick? 
Yeah, and toenails. Pink sparkle Wait, toenails okay. too? I have a question. How old are you? Two. How, two. And what are you about to be? Three. Three. When's your birthday? May 11th. May 11th. And you're about to have a birthday party? With Ella. With, with Ella. And me. Who is Ella one of your best friends? Yeah. Who else is your best friend? Shabby, but Shabby's not the bandy birthday party. But he's gonna come. He said, "Come and the birthday party, but not his." But it's not his birthday party. It's your birthday party in Ella's. No, not Shabby's. Yeah. What about is Haven your best friend? And is she also your sister? Yeah. She's just a little baby. <laughs> she is just a little baby. But is she sweet? Yeah. Is she funny? She's funny and then she laughs at me. She does. She always laughs at everything you do, doesn't she? Yeah. What is, what's your favorite thing? Here, hold my hand. What's your favorite thing about Haven? Mm, being my best friend. That's so sweet. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite thing about Daddy? Mm, my humdinger. When he, when he acts like he's a mayor humdinger? I ask why he's my daddy. You want to ask why he's your daddy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, ask him. Say, what makes you my daddy? No, my home thing. Oh, he's my home thing. I'm sorry, I forgot. Well, I thought I was Shrek. I thought you was my home thing. Hey, what's your favorite thing about mommy? Um, being my, my mommy. That's my favorite thing about being your mommy, too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I know who else is going to be at your birthday party. Yeah. What's your dog's name? Mm, Papo. Is she going to be at your birthday party? Is yeah. she crazy? But where is she? I don't she, know where she is. Someone's probably holding her. She's been going crazy. <laughs> She's right over there. Hey, I have a question for you. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to about your birthday party? What do you think your favorite part's going to be? Mm, Spy. I'm going to dress up Sky. You're going to dress up like Sky? I see. I'm going to dress up the Elsa. Oh, that would be fun. No, I, no I'm going to dress up like Anna. That's what I was thinking you were going to do. Will you tell everybody about your swim lessons? Swim lessons. <laughs> what about your swim lessons? Not about my swim lessons. Yeah, tell them about it. What's it been like? Has it been hard? No, not hard. It's like I was eh. Yeah, show it. It's just like under the water. You just like jump under the water. Is it a little scary? Yes, it was scary. Yeah, but are you really proud of yourself? No. You're not proud of yourself for being so brave? But, but you were proud of me. I was proud of you, and I think you've become a really good swimmer. I maybe the swimmer, and then I was put in my feet. <laughs> yeah, you were. And then I was in my feet in the bath. Yeah, you were practicing in the bath? Yeah, I was hitting my feet in the bath. That's but naked. Naked. <laughs> yep, take your no bath filter. naked. <laughs> There's no filter, it's just killing me, right? But we don't do swim lessons naked. Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. Hey, will you tell everybody about your podcast? Because right now you're on Mommy's podcast. But what's your podcast called? My podcast is called... You tell it. You want me to tell them? But you say it so much better. No, you tell them. No, it's your idea. You it's say your it. podcast. What's it called? It's not my podcast. You always say, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the What's Up, Everybody podcast. And then what do you say? You say, I just want to love on you, and I want to record you. No. <laughs> That's what you always say. Are you embarrassed by that? Oh, she's asleep. <laughs> hey, go get the Jesus book. What? I want you to tell everybody about your Jesus book that you have. I'm okay, telling I would do it then. You're going to go get it? Yeah. 
I don't know if you're like me and you think about how to navigate the digital world all the time, but it can be stressful. It can be hard to, you know, navigate it in a good way, Um, you know, a way that protects our hearts and all of the different things, especially with all the content out there. But I'm so thankful for Covenant Eyes because it is here to help people navigate it. So Covenant Eyes isn't just another software program. It's a game changer for people who want a solution to protecting themselves and their families from harmful online content. Covenant Eyes fosters accountability between you and a trusted family member or friend who receives regular updates on your internet activity, leaving open a safe space for honest and caring conversations. That accountability extends to all your devices by blocking harmful content and promoting healthy online habits. Um, Y'all, I know that that can sound intimidating to do something like this, but I can just tell you from personal experience, inviting anyone into those things in your life that may be a seeker or maybe the thing you're struggling with is the best thing that you can do to, you know, walk towards freedom. Uh, It's so awesome to have accountability in those gray areas, those black areas of your life, that 1% that you don't want anyone to know about. So I know it can be scary, but that's truly the best thing you can do for your life. And Covenant Eyes is doing just that. So whether you're a student, a spouse, or a pastor, Covenant Eyes empowers you to make wise choices online and stay true to your values. So if you're ready to take control of your online experience and protect what matters the most, then I highly encourage you to check out Covenant Eyes. Visit covenanteyes.com slash Sadie, and you can try it for free for 30 days. Again, that's covenanteyes.com slash Sadie to try it for free for 30 days. All right. Wait, what is this? A Jesus book. A Jesus book. And what does it talk about? Mm. You, you read it. Okay. Well, first of all, you know it better than even I do, I think. Tell us about, do you remember what some of these people's names are? Yeah. What are they? Mm, you... I don't want to say it. You say it. Honey, you're on the podcast. What What does it talk about on this page? Do you remember? Jesus. Jesus. And who's beside him? Remember? What? Remember who's beside him? Yeah. James. James. And why is that cool? James is right beside him. James. Yeah, because what's your James. name? Honey, James. Honey, James. So isn't that so cool that Jesus had a... Friend named James? She was like, I'm Honey James. Yeah, that's actually Jesus' brother's name. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. And your name's Honey James. And then, do you remember what Jesus was doing in this picture? Yeah. What was he doing? He was healing. He was healing people, wasn't he? Yeah. See, because remember it talks about when the sick people came to him, he healed them? So that's what he was doing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? What's he riding on? A donkey. A donkey. A truck. It was like a truck. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. Do you think that donkey was a talking donkey? No. You don't think it was a talking donkey? Isn't there a talking donkey in the Bible? Whoa. Did you know that donkey was in the Bible? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, let me show you this. And then remember it talks about Jesus going to heaven? Yeah, yeah, watch me. Okay. The next one is you do this one. You read it. Um, I, I, yes, and then you read it down. Oh, that's a good way to go about it. Well, remember it talks about him going to heaven and him coming back? I will show you where heaven is. You want to show me where heaven is? Show you where heaven is. Does heaven kind of sound like haven? There's heaven. There is heaven. You're right. Good job. Right after the cross, he went to heaven, and then he came back. Look, and an angel came because he was no longer in the tomb. And then he was spreading the good news. Isn't that awesome? Then, then. The end, and then remember, hey, and, and, then and then, hey, do you know where all this was? Yeah. All of that was in Israel. Who was just in Israel? Daddy! Daddy was just in Israel. Wait, tell everybody on the podcast where Daddy was. What was, uh, what was he doing? Let me see on the microphone. Yeah, say it on the microphone. Where was Daddy? Original. He was an original? Yeah. He was an original? And what was he doing there? Sit on the microphone. What was he doing there? Sleeping like a fish. <laughs> he was sleeping like a fish. What? Yeah. I thought he was. I thought you told me he was speaking Jesus on the mountains. No, I thought he was 
Sieben af <laughs> Where does that come from? I don't know. Wait, are you talking about Jonah? No, not Jonah the whale. I'm, I'm talking about Diet Sieben Diet of Fish. <laughs> in original? Yeah, in original. Are you glad he's back, though? Yeah. Me too. Did you miss me when I was gone? Hey, do you think kind you, of. do you think you could sing everybody a song on the podcast? No. Would that be too? Would that make you too nervous? No, that would not make me too nervous. Why I did... should sing. Um, I'm on my way, or should she my face? Or should... I can't sing any song. I think you should sing. I'm on my way. No, you. Sing. That's your best. Remember last night when we were watching American Idol? You said you could sing like that. Which one? Remember last night that girl you said she's a good singer. I can sing like that. I'm on my way from misery, misery to, to happiness no, today. No. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I'm on my way. Oh. <laughs> that might not be what everyone should be singing. She wants her to say. Hey now, you're an all star. No, Get your game on. No, no, she not shake. Wait, why are we singing all these songs? Is it, is it because they're on Shrek? Wait, is Shrek your favorite movie, or is it Beauty and the Beast, or The Grinch? You know what? She's a thing for green people. Shrek and The Grinch are her two favorite movies. <laughs> is Shrek and The Grinch your two favorite movies? Why do you like mean green people? Why are you obsessed with mean green people? <laughs> hey, one day whenever you go to school, what sport are you going to play? I'm not going to play any sport. You're not? No. That's okay, but I thought you told me you were going to play basketball. I told them not. Oh, you're not? I thought you were. What about tennis? No, not tennis. Pickleball? No, not pickleball. Um, what about, are you going to be a runner? I'm faster than my dad. <laughs> you are faster. Yes. Are you faster than mommy? I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm faster than my mommy. <laughs> she said, let me just get right up to the mic and let y'all know I am faster than mommy. Who has a better podcast, me or you? Whose podcast is better? Daddy and Mommy. Ooh, you like both of our podcasts? Yeah. What about yours? Mine too. What's yours called? Mine's called Daddy. Your podcast is not called that. What is your podcast called? Is it called the What's Up Everybody podcast? Yeah. Did you stop recording your podcast? You don't do that anymore? It's seasonal. Are you done with your podcast? Yep. You're done with it? Are you just going to be on Well, That's Good now? Okay, I'm going to paint my finger. All right, all right. Say bye, everybody. Well, that's good. Bye. Say, well, that's good. Well, that's good. Mother's Day is so sweet, and it's always been sweet for me even before I became a mom. I love honoring my mom and my grandmothers, so it's so special now to be a mom too. And if you are thinking, how can I celebrate a special mom in my life, then y'all look no further than Aura Frames. It is a perfect gift for moms. Aura Frames are Wi-Fi connected digital frames that make it super easy to share and display unlimited photos. It's super simple to upload and share pictures with the Aura app, and you can even preload your mom's favorite photos and memories so that she can start enjoying them right out of the box. Aura Frames were named the best digital photo frame by Wirecutter and were chosen as one of Oprah's favorite things, so you know it's gonna be good. So whether it's your mom, grandma, aunt, or even your friend, they are gonna be so excited about an Aura Frame. Personally, I've gotten this gift for um, so many people. I got it for my grandma who loves it. I got it for my aunt, also loves it. And I actually got it for our office and it has been so much fun for all the girls to send in some of their favorite memories together as a team. And it's just really sweet. So if you live in a sorority, this would be a great uh, gift to your house. But of course, focusing on moms this time of the year, it really is the best gift for moms and grandmas. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can save on the perfect gift by visiting Aura 
AuraFrames.com to get $30 off plus free shipping on their best-selling frames. That's Aura, A-U-R-A, frames.com and use the code WOW at checkout to save. Terms and conditions apply. She like never has the hiccups. Hey, how old are you going to be? <laughs> one. Are you going to be one? Can you say, ooh, ooh. Can you clap? Can you say, yay? Yay, Haven. <laughs> hey, can you give a kiss? Can you kiss? Can you give a kiss? Can you give a kiss? Can you give one kiss? Are you too distracted? Sister. Give a kiss. Woo. Oh no, Cabo. Can you clap? Say yay! Yay! What do you think? He's like, I want to touch every mic. Okay, well, we had to get Haven on the podcast, too, because this is a big month coming up. Um, Honey is turning three, May 11th, and Haven is turning one, May 22nd. So we figured we'd have them on the podcast, hopefully once a year. That way we can just see them grow up and have this forever in our memory box. Haven, you have any last words? Any last words? Okay, so as you can see, this is a really fun season of life. Um, but it also comes, you know, with highs and lows, just as parenting does. And the so low as in the hour we spent before we recorded this. Oh, yeah. Uh, talking like, and encouraging and uh, politely rebuking. I was like, hey, you really don't have to do it because, you know, it, I don't want her to feel like she has to do this. But at the same time, like, I know she wants to. She's just nervous. And I think that's kind of like the balance. Even that's one thing I've learned in parenting this year, like when to encourage her to do something and when to kind of like back out. Because I think like Honey does need the affirmation and encouragement to do something like going down a slide. You know, I, I posted that video on Instagram this year. She was so scared to go down the slide. But then when she does it, she's so proud of herself for going down the slide and ends up being like a really cool thing or like swim lessons. She literally hated swim lessons, still does, hates swim lessons so much. But then on the weekends when we go swimming, she loves swimming. So it's like, you know, that balance of pushing her to do hard things. And what I'm really teaching her right now is that just because it's hard doesn't mean it's bad. Like, Doing hard things is actually a good thing because doing something hard pushes you to be better. Learning how to swim teaches you how to swim. Then you get to have fun on the weekends, teaching you how to go down a slide. It's hard. It's scary. But then you get to play with your friends on the playground and even doing a podcast. It's like, I know it's intimidating. There's lights and there's cameras and everything, but I know she loves to do that. And at the same time, like every day when I go to work, does she not always want to come with me? She always wants to do my podcast. And so I'm like, honey, like this is this is an opportunity for us to get to do something together and do a podcast together. So it's just like kind of learning that balance of just, when yeah, to this is encourage. the balance. Yes. Yeah, it, it's you know, it's parenting. It's the balance of yeah, when to encourage, but also when to, you know, kind of back away because you know, you don't want your kids to, for you don't want to force your kids to do anything. But then again, you know, we don't want to be those parents that just never, you know, push, push their, them to do yeah, things never, outside yeah, their comfort zone. Yeah, never, never, never push them to do something that they're uncomfortable with or, or maybe they don't feel like they're capable um, of doing. But yeah, it's finding the balance of how to, you know, go about encouraging. I can maybe yeah. be a little more forceful with things and you can be a little more gentle with the, with the encouragement. Oh, you're like classic dad. Where yeah. you're like, do it, and you get frustrated, and I'm like, let's talk about it, you know. It's Why true. are you scared? What makes you nervous? But that's mom and dad, you know, yeah. that's just part of it. I think that one thing I've been surprised by this year is how early insecurity starts, you mm -hmm. know. At two years old, you already see insecurity, you know, in her and different things. Like, she'll, even actually in that little moment, I said, you know, will you sing a song? And she's like, yeah, should I sing? Um, and I love how she says, I'm on my Wii. Because that song, I'm on my way, he actually does say it like, mm -hmm. I'm on my Wii. Mm -hmm. And so she says, I'm on my Wii. And From so Shrek. I said, 
sing it. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, I can't. And she always does that. Like she'll get nervous to sing. And she's like, I can't do that. I can't sing. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like you're two years old. You like, you can sing. You're so good at singing. But I'm so nervous about that. Like I get so nervous to sing. And I feel like, okay, are you insecure in that way? Because you saw me be insecure that way? Or is it like just a generational thing? Or is that just like in you? I don't know. It's just so interesting. And so that's why I'm trying to already be intentional about the ways that I speak and even the ways that I act around myself singing, like not being nervous, not being insecure, because I want to show her that you can do things that make you scared, you know? Are you back? No way. You got pink and orange nails. That is so cool. That's absolutely beautiful. Do you want to show the cameras? Show the camera. You did oh your toenails too? Oh my gosh, those are the cutest Whoa. ever. Show the camera. Show the cameras. That is so cute. Hey, do this. Cute. Hey, hey do, do this to the cameras. No, no. Show, show the cameras. No. <laughs> Honey, we were just talking about you on the podcast, how awesome you are. Do your mayor humming your voice. No. Do it. <laughs> Say it. Say it. <laughs> Say it. Do your line. No. <laughs> You're funny. All right, me and daddy are going to okay, finish right, our podcast, finish. okay? Go. go upstairs. I love you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Silly Willy Podcaster. But anyways, yeah, it's so crazy how early that starts, you mm -hmm. know? And so I'm just trying to already have those conversations with her because I do think that's something that, you know, it, it's okay that she'll face in life. I've faced that and those things aren't bad things. It's something to lean into. But I want to teach her like how to overcome those things and how to lean into them um, because I think my mom was so helpful to me in those areas of my life because, you know, mom didn't really struggle with fear, but – she saw that I did and she was such a good mom to me in that. And I just remember like, I remember the scriptures that she spoke over me, like, do not be afraid for I am with you, you know, um, do not be dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you on my righteous right hand. Like I would probably only know that verse by heart because my mom always spoke it over me. So I just want to be that way for honey, you know, and it's so cool because honey says that she says like, um, you know how she would say, Fear not, for I am with you. Like, honey says that when she's scared because she's heard me say that. And I've seen, like, in different times, she says things that she's seen us say. And that's in the small things, the little funny things, like some of the bad things. Like, she says, shoot, when she drops off, which I should probably be better at that. Or she says, oh. I think oh. that's from me. And she says, oh, my gosh, which is definitely from me. And have you noticed lately? She goes, yes, 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 which is so me. Because mm -mm. I'll be like, oh, yes, 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 yes. She does that now. Well, she gets the, oh, I have a good idea That's from you. Oh, yeah, she does do that for me. So it's like, you know, she imitates us in the small things. But she, gets, those, she, she, she gets some good things from me. And those big things, it matters too. And I think that that proves that she's retaining what we're teaching and showing. And so it's important to speak those scriptures and like show her how to overcome things and even just like talk through insecurities. But it is wild. I'm, I was surprised that it starts so early. Yeah. I think we're definitely in the stage where <clears throat> I feel like she's more, um, you know, everyone always says like terrible twos and she's, we're almost, she's almost three, but she's kind of in the stage where I feel like she has more tantrums now than she did when she was, you know, younger in her twos. The swings are high. Yeah. <laughs> so just even trying to, you know, in our fleshly, you know, human nature, trying to figure out how to parent that um, to where, you know, like you said, you are you know, you're not affirming it and you're trying to like, you know, correct it, but you're also trying to encourage her, encourage her out of it, especially in public places. You know, obviously we travel a lot and if there's a situation where it's in public, even trying to navigate, you know, how to do that in front of people, because there's always going to be someone judging you. And, and even just, you know, us having those thoughts of like, you know, am I doing this right? What are people thinking about, you know, the way that I'm parenting the situation or, or whatever on flights or certain situations. And we're kind of at, at that stage now where I just feel like it's more elevated just mm -hmm. with her swings. Like when it's, when it's low, it's low. And, um, 
you know, there's been moments sometimes where sometimes people even forget that she's a two year old. Yeah. Like people come up to us and take pictures and stuff. And it's like, honey, it was like, she doesn't like, know you, you know, she's just yeah. two. So there is like that public aspect that I think every parent feels for sure. And I think we're just feeling it a lot right now too, because we do get recognized in public. And so we're learning how to like, you know, stay confident in us being like the parents we are in public, even whenever that's kind of like embarrassing at times. Cause like she's throwing a tantrum, but at the end of the day, she's a two year old, you know? Yeah. Or like, well, I mean, like whatever yeah. that looks like. Yeah. Christian and I both um, make our physical and spiritual health a priority. And so we focus a lot on giving our bodies and minds what we need for them to stay healthy and grow spiritually. It's important to me that the supplements that we take are of the highest quality. And that's why for the past several years, we've been drinking AG1. Unlike many supplement brands, AG1 is constantly searching for ways to do things better. And at 52 versions of their formula and counting, the AG1 team is always improving how they source, test, and find the best quality ingredients out there. Many of you have asked if AG1 is really that good because we talk about it all the time and I'm here to say yes, I already have my AG1 today. Christian and I both drink it. We feel so good after we do. I make it a priority to drink every single day because I genuinely feel so much better. Quality for AG1 isn't just a buzzword. It's a commitment backed by expert-led scientific research, high-quality ingredients, industry-leading manufacturing, and thorough testing. At each step of the process, AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. And I know that we can trust it, um, what's in it, even every scoop of AG1, because it's tested for 950 contaminants and banned substances, while other brands usually test for 10. So that is serious commitment. Taking care of my health shouldn't be as complicated as people make it. And AG1 simplifies it by putting everything into one scoop. Just mix it with some water. I like it with ice water, make it cold. It's seriously so good and tastes amazing. And it's just less than 60 seconds to cover all your nutritional basis for a day. So hello, that's awesome. AG1's ingredients are heavily researched for efficacy and quality. And I love that every scoop also includes prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for a healthy gut. I put a lot of emphasis on the importance of gut health because I know that also helps your mental health and so does AG1. So like I said, I do it just in a glass of ice cold water. I love it. I normally drink it on my way to work um, because it just makes me feel so much more focused. And it's amazing because my father-in-law is actually seen a huge um just like jump in his health and even some really cool side effects that just taking all this vitamins have boosted for him um so that's awesome i love it so much and so do so many other people i partnered with ag1 for so long because they have such a high quality product that we genuinely look forward to drinking every day so if you want to replace your multivitamin and more start with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d3 plus k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com com slash woe. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash woe to check it out today. Her being the, you know, the age that she's at now, patience, it's like evolutionizes from, you know, patience from, from Haven's age to maybe not sleeping or eating or whatever to honey's it's more so it is like a tantrum or it is, you know, not cooperating or it is talking back in a situation. So it's been a new development of like how to handle, you know, this little human who's my child who, um, you know, does not often, does not all the time want to like willfully comply to what you're telling her to do. And, um, you know, if it's we're late for church or if it's, if it's a certain situation, it's like it can be so easy to just to get frustrated um, in a moment, but exercising the patience when, um, yeah, you look at a, you know, your kid that you tell them to do something and they just say no. It's like it takes a new level of <laughs> a new challenge. Uh, yeah, it's a new challenge and it takes, you know, more patience and more um yeah, just self-control to not, you know, get frustrated or or, or even just flustered at a situation. So, I think that's for me the biggest thing I've learned this year of like I mean, even even sleeping. It's like we have to well, I'll, I'll say more so me, uh you do it oftentimes, but I would maybe say I do it more, which is which is whatever. It's besides the point. Um don't know why I'm rambling on that, but we have to like, for her to go to sleep in her bed, we have to like lay next to her until she falls asleep, which sometimes it's, you know, north of an hour and it's just like exhausting of like, you know, cause that's pretty much our whole night. Um, just trying to get her to sleep. And then she ends up sleeping in her bed for two hours and she comes to get with us. <laughs> so they kind of just defeats the purpose. But, um, yeah, it's like in those moments of, 
you know, the, the sacrifice of that and the, the self-control of, you know, it's been an hour and you look over and she's just eyes wide open and it's like 11 PM and it's like, can you just please go to sleep? Uh, so it's just, it's just, it's been a, just a year for me of learning how to, um, yeah, tap into new levels of patience and self-control that we haven't necessarily really had to deal with. Yeah. It's crazy because like we say this on the podcast all the time that each season prepares you for your next season and that's in everything in life. But I think that you especially see that whenever you become a parent and it's so cool because you you really see that start from the moment you find out you're pregnant and all of the trimesters are so important. You know, they all they all help you get to the point of being ready for labor. Like before you're pregnant, you're so scared of labor, right? You're like, that sounds horrible. That sounds so scary. How could I ever do that? And then nine months pregnant, you're like, oh my gosh, if this baby does not come out tomorrow, like I'm about to start bouncing on that ball or doing whatever I have to do to get this baby out. And you no longer are afraid of labor because the process has prepared you for it, right? And it's the same way with uh, with a lot of things in life. In one season, if you were to skip too far to the end, you'd say, man, that seems terrifying. If you were to tell me five years or six years ago, you're going to be preaching a passion, I would have been like, whew. I don't think I could ever do that. You know, it would have been so scared. But the process prepared me for it. By the time I was there, I was ready and equipped, even though, yes, I was still scared and there were still nerves involved. I knew I was ready for it based off of the way that God had prepared me. And you see that in the nine months of pregnancy. And then you see it from the time they're born to now, you know, the way honey was as a newborn. In a lot of ways, even though that was hard, it prepared us and gave us patience and we grew in our patience for the next season and the next one. And now having a three-year-old, you know, look at you and tell you no or throw a tantrum or not go to sleep, I always think about, okay, well, when you were, you know, two months old, I would rock you while you scream for two hours, you know, and you might do it more now, but I did it more then. I was always the one that rocked you did it more than I did it more hours of screaming. And so now I, now I put Haven to sleep more and you put Honey to sleep more, but teammate. But I think that it is really cool because God designed the process and the process does prepare you for the seasons to come so that when you're there, you are ready for them, you know, and, and you might not feel ready for them. You're learning through the whole thing um, and it's hard and it's refining, but man, it makes you so much better as a person. And so that's what I always try to tell people who are like afraid of having kids. I'm like, well, yeah, because you've never had kids before, you know, but when you get pregnant, you'll feel prepared as you go. You know, God will give you what you need uh, as you journey along the way. And that's the same if you're a mom or not. If you're in college, if you're in high school, wherever you're listening to this, it's the same thing for whatever your season's in. You can't jump too far ahead because you're not there yet. So you don't even have the grace for that yet. You don't have the vision for that yet. You don't have the strength for that yet. But as you go, put some tools in your toolbox. You'll be ready whenever you get there. Um, and it's tools cool. in the toolbox. One thing I've learned this year too, that's been very cool, is just like the true um, undeniable evidence of the fact that God knits us together in our mother's womb and we are all in original. I'm like, that is just like the craziest thing ever. And I think just because having two kids has really taught me that because I really prepared to have Haven and her be just like honey. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I if you would have asked me if I would have thought she would be just like honey, I would have been like, no, she could be different. But I think like, be actually perfect. inside, I did. Like, I, I thought like, I'm preparing for her to be like the same baby. I had the largest bin of bibs because honey spit up so much that we had to have so many bibs. We changed five, at least five bibs a day with honey. It was just constant. And then with Haven, she never used one bib. And I was like, what? This is crazy because she never spit up. And even just their temperament and their personality. And like, you literally see that from, we're not even, Haven's not even a year yet. And you see just how different her and Honey are just personality wise. Um, Haven is so, she's just goofy. Like she's funny. She's down for the hang. She's laid back. She's chill. She's, she is like, what's up everybody. But also she's a little bit more like mischievous. Whereas like, Honey, if you tell her not to do something, she would like feel bad. Like she would like actually try not to do it. Haven, if you said like, Haven, no, no. She like whips her head around, looks at you. She's like, 
And then she does exactly what you just tell her not to do. And I know she's so little, but even at this age, you just see such a difference in the two of them. And parenting has looked completely different up to this point. Um, Our methods, if you will, and like sleep and everything has looked so different. I mean, with Honey, she literally was the pickiest eater ever. I could not get her to eat anything that kids like even. No chicken nuggets, no mac and cheese, like nothing. Honey would not eat anything as a baby. Haven eats everything as a baby like literally the craziest stuff haven just like downs it and eats so much honey it would take me two hours to put her to sleep haven just lays down and goes to sleep like it was just so different and I think one thing that's been cool about having the second too is that um my mom says this like you can't like you shouldn't beat yourself up for it like as far as like it's not your fault why your kids are a certain way but it's also not to your credit why your kids are a certain way to some degree like to some of it yes it is your doing but some of it like it's not your fault that your child's a picky eater but it's really not to your credit that they're not because I think so many people pride themselves on like oh my child eats everything when you look at a kid that's like picky you like judge the parent thinking that like they don't give them the right food or that they didn't discipline or they didn't try or they haven't tried this or that and I'm like no trust me I tried everything and then when I had Haven it kind of made me feel like okay that wasn't really my fault that's just kind of like the way honey is and I'm gonna keep introducing new things and keep trying that's why I was kind of encouraging whenever she said on the podcast like her favorite thing is butter chicken from Taste of India I would have just never thought honey would have eaten that you know even six months ago and now she's gotten so much better but it's really not to my credit that Haven's such a good eater she just is and so I thought that was like a really good piece of advice for my mom yeah Um, that's good but that is something I definitely learned this year anything else from you no I mean I think yeah I think everything that you said plus you know the things that I kind of touched on earlier of just the new levels of exercising self-control in different certain in different situations and just the way that it looks different now than you know, when Honey was one, even Haven now, um, yeah, with Honey about to be three, just the new levels of, yeah, um, yeah just new all season, the new seasons, new all, challenges. The things, all the things that come with it. Okay, let me ask you this, because this is really cool. Uh, I guess it was two weeks ago, you said to me, or was it two weeks or three weeks ago, where you said, Sadie, would you mind if like I went to Auburn this weekend? Because I kind of just feel like it would be good to have like a weekend by myself. And I was like, yes, I 100% think you should do that because I've actually been telling you you should do more things by yourself. And the reason I said that is because you used to always like go to Red Barn and Auburn and like have like quiet times by yourself or go on drives. And you haven't really gotten to do that in a long time just because of the busyness of being a husband and a father. And so when you said that, I was like, yes. Well, then that day that you said that, you got an invitation to go to Israel. And it was for the same weekend. And it was going to be by yourself with a crew you didn't know. So I want to ask you, one, what do you think it was that stirred in your heart to say, like, I think I need to do a trip by myself or do something by myself? Like, what led you to that place? And then two, what was it like saying yes to going to Israel so last minute? Mm-hmm. Well, the Auburn situation was a little it was a little different dynamic um, just because we had a free weekend on the calendar, which we hadn't had in a while. Um, and it was their spring football game. And I'd been keeping up with football a pretty good bit. And I was like, and I'd, I'd have, I've never been to ACC's new building, which was the church that I went to in college. Um, so it was in the weather. It was weird. It was like, I had that thought and the weather was beautiful and the weather was going to be pretty in Auburn. I was like, that'd be, that'd be fun just to go watch the spring game and go get, go to the church and just kind of be by myself for the weekend. And then as I was kind of pondering that, um, yeah, two hours later, I got a call from a friend who I was just on his podcast like a week before and asked if I wanted to go to, um, go to Israel. This is on Tuesday and we left on Friday. Um, and he asked me and like, without hesitation, I said, no. Um, I was like, it's, you know, but two kids, I can't really just, you know, you know, leave on the drop of a hat. Like maybe like you can, um, because he was single. And uh, I was like, I can't just you know, go to Israel by myself for six days. Um, and that was really it. He was, oh, he was like, yeah, like, you know, that makes sense. Like just, and that, it wasn't like, think about it, pray about it, you know, get back with me. And I was like, it, it didn't end like that. I was like, yep, man, like, you know, thanks for the invite. Uh, maybe another time. Um, and I didn't think about it again for a while or a couple hours. And this is not like TMI or anything, but I was getting in the shower and um, 
I, me and Sadie were talking and she was about to leave. And I was like, yeah, I just randomly got invited to go to Israel. And just, you know, just cause I just threw it out there. Um, and she was like, you should go. And I was like, what are you talking? I was like, no, what are you talking about? I was like, I shouldn't go. Like, I already told him no. And she was like, well, just pray about it. And I was like, okay. Um, so you were so like, no, yeah, you I were so like, shocked. I said, you should yeah, go. I was like, no, I shouldn't go. Um, so prayed about it. Um, got on a zoom call that night with the guys that were, um, in, that, that invited us and that were going to be hosting us. And then talked to a lot of different, um, mentors, uh, and just kind of got their opinion on it just with all the war stuff that's been going on. And, and um, this is before the, the recent, it was before, but it was it, before I ran, it was before so. the Iran bombings, but it was also in the middle of, yeah, it's still been a lot yeah, of conflict Israel had and just, war. Israel had just done some, some stuff in Assyria, um, to still conflict. Yeah. Um, and you know, like I said, if I was single and didn't have a family and kids and it'd be different, but navigating discernment, um, with an awesome opportunity like that, but also being in this place that is kind of dangerous, um, at least right now, and having a wife and two kids, kind of just the discernment process looks a little different. So all that to say, um, I did not really make up my mind until Thursday that I was like, for sure going. We booked our, uh, everything got booked like late Wednesday night. And uh, by Thursday, it was like Thursday afternoon. I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to go. And we flew out at 6 a.m. on Friday. Well, we'll um, say too, like, because... One thing that was kind of crazy is all your mentors kept saying, well, what did Sadie say? What did Sadie say? And then whenever you said that I said you should go, well, they're like, then you should go. Which then I kind of got nervous because I was like, well, I don't want all this pressure on me. Like I'm the deciding factor, you know, like I want like, do you feel good about it? He's like, yes, but I will say like, because me and your mom had a really good talk about this because of course, like his mom was nervous for him to go because it is Israel and the times and everything. And I just said like, I had prayed about it and I really had peace about it and he prayed about it and he really has peace about it. And a security guard told me this a long time ago because I actually went to uh, Mogadishu, Somalia with my mom years ago, which is literally known as one of the world's most dangerous places. I think it's, it's definitely top three world's most dangerous places. If you look it up, Everything says do not go. Government says like do not go to Mogadishu, Somalia. Um, it's like if you've ever seen the movie Captain Phillips, Mogadishu, Somalia. Black Hawk Down, Mogadishu, Somalia. Like really bad things happen there. And so I remember feeling a piece to go. And I told your mom this, that the security guard told me one time, like the safest place that you can be is in the center of God's will. And so even if that's a scary place, place as far as like it's a dangerous place if that's where you feel like you're in the center of God's will then that's the safest place you can be and he said that really helped him because he used to be like a cop that did like you know busted down like drug um situations and it was like really scary but he said he really felt like he was in the center of God's will so it gave him confidence and so I was just saying, you know, that to your mom that I really do. I would never want you to put yourself in danger. Obviously, you're my husband and you're the father of our two girls. Like you're my best friend. But at the same time, I feel like that was an opportunity that literally felt handmade by God for you to get to go to Israel. It was your first mm-hmm. time to go to Israel. It was right. Like it was like everything you're passionate about, working out, studying God's word. Like it was so perfect for you. You had just said you wanted to go on a trip by yourself. Like you just said that you wanted to travel was like more. It was literally life, yeah. tailored. It was, I said, I know you didn't pray for this babe, but it's as if God answered prayers you weren't even praying with this trip. And so it's just like, I just believe that the safest place he can be is in the center of God's will. And I really do believe that this was such a gift from God that you were able to go on this trip mm-hmm. and you had the most amazing time and literally praise God that it was the good timing and you're able to make it back safely. And we are praying for Israel. And yeah. encourage everyone to pray for Israel during this time and just all the people involved in war because it's so sad. But I'm so glad that you went. Yep. So glad that I went. One of the best trips of my life. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd been praying that. Um, yeah, I just wanted God to just kind of stir up, you know, my affections for him again. Um, just in kind of like a new way. And that trip opportunity happened like right after um, kind of that that <clears throat> that prayer time. So. It was awesome. But yeah, I definitely rekindled a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, made me fall more in love with the word just from getting to see it all um, kind of unfold where 
you know, you read things in the Bible and getting to kind of put a picture to um, some of the words that you read. It was definitely such a cool experience. And um, yeah, I made it out two days before um, the Iran bombings, which um, is crazy. But yeah, we're definitely praying for Israel. And um, yeah, Genesis 12 says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. So we uh, stand with Israel and we're praying for them. And um, we hope that our country does the same. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite part? The Sea of Galilee. Yeah, just getting to see, um, no pun intended, getting to, <laughs> yeah, just getting to see where they believe um, Jesus would have met Peter and uh, where they believe Jesus would have walked on the water in, in, in regards to the sea and where he would have, um, yeah, you know, gotten off the boat and then where he would have gone to the synagogues and where they believe he would have healed the lepers and um, the Sermon on the Mount and all those different things. It was it was one of the most yeah it was one of the coolest experiences getting to be on the water that um, Jesus walked on and that he told the wind and the waves to be still so that was a uh, my favorite part. It's so cool too because I look back at my caption whenever I went to the Sea Galley in 2017 and our captions were almost like identical. I was like, that's oh, so weird. Some um, would say we're like one. What? It's crazy. Whoa, that's good. And you had to show your new tattoo because I was like, who are you? You're in Israel and you just got a tattoo and you have a mustache. Yep. Got a mustache and a new tattoo. So just felt fitting for the trip. Well, tell about the tattoo. That's really cool. All right. So it's a lion from the tribe of Judah. Um, it's, uh, so it was from this tattoo shop called Razuk. It's, um, it's founded in 1300. It's 700 years old. And it's a 28 generations of the um, same family who's been doing the same. Uh, tattoo shop but it's right next to where they believe jesus was crucified at the uh the rock of golgotha and um the tradition is that pilgrims that would travel to the holy sepulcher or holy sepulcher would um to get in you would everyone would, would have would have a um a tattoo so when you would come when pilgrims would travel in they'd all get a tattoo so that's kind of like your, your branding or your your, your marking for, for getting in so um it just felt fitting me and one of the other guys on the trip got a tattoo and <laughs> Uh, it's like a stamp. It's like a, a um, it's like a stamp. So it's one size fits all. It's one thing. the The stamp is seven hundred years old. So it they imprint it on you. Then they uh, they do the tattoo. Obviously, it's not the way that they used to do it with like you know the old needles and stuff. It's it's modern uh, ink and technology. But the uh, the imprint's the same. The building's the same. So it's kind of like a little underground thing. So it's really cool. Highly recommended. If you uh, travel to Jerusalem, it's really cool. I'm so glad that you went on that trip, and I really am just glad you got to experience that whole thing. It was really awesome, and super glad that you're back and good. What's really cool, though, like on this on this note of what we've learned this year, so that was a huge growing point for you. But something that was a huge growing point for me was you going to Israel. Um, it was actually really cool because whenever you said you were going to go. I was like kind of surprised at myself that I didn't have any fear about it. And I was like, you should go. Like I really meant that and wasn't, you know, because sometimes I'll be like, you should do that. But like secretly I'm like, oh no, I'm so nervous. Like I actually genuinely felt like you should go. And so I was kind of surprised by myself like that. Well, then like you were going to be gone or you were gone for six days and it was just me here with the girls. And in the past, if I was just going to be home with the girls, I would definitely go stay at my parents' house because I would just get nervous or whatever. And this time I was like, no, like I got this. I felt confident in it. And then some of you know this, some of you don't. I used to be terrified of thunderstorms. Like I used to be so scared of them whenever I was little. And of course, when he's gone, we had three days of like the worst storms ever. It was tornado, tornado warnings. warnings, hail, crazy lightning, thunder. And I was just like, oh my gosh. But I was not afraid. And so I wasn't afraid with you being gone. I wasn't afraid with me being with the girls. I wasn't afraid with the thunderstorms. And actually, it was the first time Honey was scared of a thunderstorm. So she slept with me and she was like talking to me about it. And it was just like so crazy that... I was just so glad that I have worthy that fear so that I could sit with her and talk about how like, I know it's scary, like, but it's okay, you know? And then I would try to predict it. Like when we would see the lightning, I'd be like, it's about the thunder. And then she started like anticipating it. And so it was just really cool. And then I was talking to my mom the next day because she was like, are you sure you don't want to come stay with us? Because it was like day two or maybe even the third day of the storms. I was like, no, we're really doing good. She was like, okay. And then I just said the obvious. I was like, you can't believe that. Like, you cannot believe how I'm being right now, can you? She goes, I really can't. She's like, me and your dad were like, 
wow, she is like a new person. And I said, mom, this is like crazy, but I just like, I am a new person. I was like, this is who I am in Christ. Like, this is who I am in Christ. When I'm in Christ, I'm confident as a mom. I'm confident in my home. I'm confident through the storms. And I know like sometimes that's ebb and flow. Like sometimes I still have anxiety or sometimes I still get nervous about things. But I just believe that every time I have anxiety, it's an opportunity to lean in and like, trust God more Mm -hmm. and learn from that experience. But you going to Israel really taught me a lot about where I'm at in life and like how much I've grown in Christ. And that was just really cool. And I will say, even in like the small things, the Lord is so good and so kind. And I was reading in Matthew 5 on the Sermon on the Mount message. And it's so cool because as Jesus is giving this extremely powerful message to his disciples and all these people on the mountain on what it looks like to you know, inherit the kingdom of God and be with him. It talks about anxiety. It talks about not being anxious about tomorrow, but it is like the most loving and comforting and kind way that you could ever talk about anxiety because it's not just like, hey, don't be anxious. That's ridiculous. Like get over it. It's like the heart of the father. He's like, hey, don't be anxious about anything because your father loves you so much that he is going to provide all of your needs. And so why would you be anxious about tomorrow? Because your father is going to your father is going to give you what you need tomorrow. He's going to provide that need. And I'm just like, well, you know, if we're believers and we really believe that God is with us and we're walking out the call of God in our life and like, don't act like you don't have God with you, you know, don't be so anxious and act like you don't have Mm -hmm. a God that's for you. And so I just feel like that was a really cool thing for me because I realized, man, I really, I really do trust God in that way. And because I trust God as my provider and my sustainer, my anxieties have ceased a lot more. So that's why I said like, this is who I am in Christ. And I feel like, I feel like just in this podcast, you know, we were talking about what we were, what we learned this year. And we kind of wanted this podcast to be like a time capsule podcast for us. Like, okay, this is how old our kids are. This is what we're learning. And I think that was a huge thing in like shaping who you are this year. And I know it's fresh and it just happened last week. Um, But at the same time, that was just a huge trip for you on a lot of different levels. So I feel like we could not talk about that. Could not talk about that. We could not talk about that. And so super glad that that you're back. And I feel like we have just learned so much this year. We're so grateful for this year. and I think maybe next April we should do this again. Love that. We should like, you know, just mark the times idea. as our kids grow up. Maybe I, can, I, maybe I can go back to Israel next uh, March. Perfect. Perfect. And we both uh, have birthdays in June. So this is just a good time to like, it's okay, great, where are a, we at? This is a great time. Where are we at with everything? But anyways, yeah. thanks for listening in. Thanks for letting us do just a fun podcast in our house with our family. Um, it's kind of more like a vlog style, I guess, today which has been really sweet and fun. But we love you guys. Thanks for coming along the journey. And we hope you have a great West. West. (laughs) And I hope that you have a great rest of your week. See you.